set up like they would be around 6000 to 8000 words they would require more in depth research more citation of case laws a better and like you know in depth analysis uh, then come the project reports which uh, you know typically address a particular research question and uh, there could be both uh, empirical uh, data involved here or secondary sources uh, you know which you can actually cite in these project reports uh, for example if someone is writing uh, on the topic of mining in uh, the states of tamil nadu and karnataka so there it would be in the form of a project report now you need to collect empirical data to support whatever you are saying so you would go to primary websites and collect for example you know how many uh, mines were operational in last year how many were closed what you know what was the amount exported that particular year etc so that's the kind of data which you would include when you are writing project reports then come blogs now blogs have become extremely popular these days almost everybody is either running a blog or you know make uh, submitting blog posts etc now when you are writing a blog it's typically a particular facet of a current legal development which you take up and you analyze a blog would not necessarily like you know involve a lot of footnoting or maybe like you know five six pages of a write up a blog is typically 1000 to 1500 words so uh, the main challenge while writing a blog is that how can you fit your ideas in 2000 to 1500 words and how can you be crisp and effective at the same time now case comments so uh, a lot of time i get this question that how should i address a case comment now what should be the footnote there so uh, if you're writing a case comment you should uh, proceed like you know first you give the facts in your own words in brief then move on to discuss the law which the case has discussed then you know analyze the judgment you know present the judgment analyze the judgment talk about its implications so a case comment would be the summary of the case along with your own interpretation if you think the judge is wrong then write that the judge is wrong there and explain why you think that you know the decision is wrong so a case comment wouldn't essentially be just reproducing whatever has been said in the case but it would also be analyzing the implications of that particular case and also analyzing the rationale behind the ratio now reviews could be anything it could be a book review it could be the review of an article that has been written it could be a critique so here you need to bring out novel points you need to read that particular piece which you are reviewing and then figure out why you agree or not agree with the author and if there is something which you don't agree with then you need to go and research into the evidences which you can support as a part of your argument to argue that why you do not agree to that particular thing for example a few months ago there were a lot of anti ca and pro ca articles now uh, if you do not agree for example with an anti ca article you go and you research and you figure out what is the particular bit in that article which you do not agree with and why is that so what are the different case laws or rules or laws which you can cite in support of your argument so that's how you can actually you know draft up an effect critique now uh, we come to how do you choose a topic now i have addressed this question even in uh, on a video on my youtube channel now uh, the one of the first things which you need to uh, keep in mind while choosing a topic is that it should be current so uh, i think a few days ago someone came to me and uh, they were writing an article on the, uh, the, the criminal amendment act in 2018 i think so i told them one of the reasons why your article despite it being well written is not being accepted is because it is something which like you know it's a two year old topic so if you are doing it right now there is a huge chance that the journals or reviews where you are submitting it are not going to accept it so you need to keep in mind that when you are choosing a topic it should be current and latest so again uh, is it rare or not so for example you know your topic could be uh, something which is like you know in currency right now but at the same time maybe it has been written a lot about it. for example force majeure in uh, commercial contracts during covid times now that's an, a topic which has been written myriad times now in the past two months so if you are going to uh, you know write on that particular topic you either need to bring out a new dimension there or you know you you need to approach it in a different way if you write or give the arguments which everybody else is giving then that doesn't make sense because you wouldn't really be adding value or adding anything new to 
that particular area. So you need to see what the topic you are choosing, what value is it adding to the existing jurisprudence in that particular field. Now, uh, you also need to see whether it is analytical or not. Uh, for example, if someone is writing on uh, separation of powers, so just citing theories after theories and writing, you know, where, which term is derived from, etc., would not really give that edge to your article. Uh, for example, uh, recently, so what's happened is almost all legislations are uh, before the Supreme Court. So if someone's writing something on separation of powers, they can say that, you know, this kind of practice, is it like, you know, is the Supreme Court exercising overarching powers? Does this dilute the theory of separation of powers? So something where you can relate it to the current happenings as well as analyze, you know, uh, like the separation of powers in context of something, uh, you know, more pertinent to the present times rather than, uh, you know, writing a theoretical uh, explanation of the same. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, that is, these are the four things you need to keep in mind when you are choosing a topic. Now, uh, structuring your article. So this is something which I have been telling my mentees also, uh, like uh, I recently started a mentorship program. So uh, this is something which is very, very important. Uh, you need to have a structure in your head before you put your pen to paper. So when you are, uh, you, for example, uh, you are writing on separation of powers uh, in context of the current happenings. Now what you need to do is, firstly go through all the secondary By secondary, I mean, uh, whatever articles you find online or offline, news articles, blogs, any opinion pieces or op-ed pieces that you can find. So, you know, uh, which are not really primary sources, but things which give you a link to these primary sources, such as case laws or legislations, etc. See where all has Supreme Court exercised their overarching powers. You know, go through them, go back to that those particular case laws, read them in entirety. You start from secondary sources, you get the links to primary sources from there, you go back to these, and then you go through the primary sources, which could be the laws or case laws, etc. Then you pick up the points, whatever points you find pertinent. Then you frame questions and sub-questions out of it. So you can you know, frame a broad question and several small questions from it. After you are done with this, you would have an outline of what you are going to cover. So after you have, for example, you know, you would be talking about uh, like, what are the Supreme Court's powers? How has it, you know, overstepped, overstepped its authority in, uh, you know, dealing with the, maybe the current migrant crisis, or maybe, uh, you know, with any particular law on which it was talking about, or is, was it necessary for the Supreme Court to step in? Because, you know, you cannot leave everything to the government and the Supreme Court has to actually step in to ensure that the, gov the executive is working properly. Would this kind of, you know, uh, uh, stepping in would dilute the theory of separation of power? So these are the kind of questions which should come to your mind while you are reading through the secondary and the primary sources. Whatever comes to your mind, make a note of the same. Those would be your uh, main questions and sub-questions. Once you have a set of questions and sub-questions ready, then what you need to do is, you need to arrange them in a particular manner so as to give a flow to your article. So that is where an outline of your article would be formed. This is the structure of an article. And post that, begin your actual proper research where you would go into each and every uh, question separately. Now, legal research. How to begin your legal research? So your preliminary legal research would begin with going through secondary sources and then moving back to the primary sources. Then you need to research each question and sub-question separately. So whatever you have, for example, uh, if you have to research on whether, uh, you know, such an action on the part of Supreme Court is dilution of uh, the theory of separation of powers. Go back to what is theory of separation of powers? What are the various rules of it? Does such, a, such an activity actually lead to dilution or not? Read case laws on the same, read any articles, opinions, etc. Go through, you know, the, the relevant constitutional provisions, etc. So you need to do a very in-depth and thorough research of each and every sub-question that you have framed. Uh, post that, you need to streamline your research in a particular direction. So, you know, you cannot just read everything that comes in your way because research, research is going to be very vast. So you need to focus yourself on what arguments you need to advance. So once maybe you have gone through all the materials, 
you would realize that you know maybe i want to structure my paper in this way i want to put forth these arguments you start you basically start with a broad research and then try to focus your article in a particular direction and keep narrowing it in you know in a particular direction in which you want your article to advance so this is where you start framing your arguments you know whether i stand for it whether i stand against it if i am giving arguments for it what arguments should i include and what are the evidences which i need for the same so such kind of thinking should you know uh, develop once you start going in an in depth research now uh, as I, i always keep saying separate the chaff from the grain so that basically means that you know research is a very very vast uh, field so once you start reading you will not know where to stop because there would be a lot of resources to read so here you need to figure out what is relevant and what is irrelevant so in order again in order to do that you need to have your arguments in place you need to have your questions and sub questions in place and you need to see what is pertinent to your particular question or sub question or argument and what is not so you do an in depth research only towards that and sift out the irrelevant bits of the research so that is when you are going to get a streamlined proper research which is focused towards your writer now how to begin legal writing so you have your research in place you have your arguments in place your questions and sub questions have been answered you have a proper quantum of legal research in place how do you express the same now uh, i typically what what i follow is once you start writing you should always have an introduction uh, now as i stated earlier your topic should always have a problem uh, you know involved in it it should be analytical in nature there should be something you would should add to the existing legal jurisprudence so uh, here when you talk about your introduction you should explain the problem you are going to explore in brief you know maybe 500 words 1000 words whatever be the word limit you are writing for if you are writing for a blog then maybe 200 300 words so you should always explain what is the problem you are going to explore and this should be very crisp and effective now uh, once you are done with this you should come down to the operative part of the article so you should explain the law which is in question here so for instance uh, if you were writing about the theory of separation of powers explain what does this theory mean how has it developed over the years why am i even raising this question that you know why why is uh, supreme court's overarching uh, powers diluting separation of laws or not so you need to actually discuss that bit then you come to the analysis bit where you would give your own interpretation of the problem you are again when you are giving your own interpretation you need to support it with evidences you need to write uh, you know for example a particular law says this i think the law means this because the particular case law has held that the law means this and that is why i am giving this argument so you, there needs to be a proper correlation of primary sources uh, you know backing your argument you cannot just say that okay just because i think this is true that's why this is true there has to be proper evidences you know your research needs to show in your writing so that is something you need to take care of after that the end is conclusion where i would personally suggest always include recommendations or suggestions there so yeah that is something that you need to do uh after that uh, the other things that you need to keep in mind now firstly footnoting you need to uh, you know footnote properly you should follow either the harvard style or the oscola style remember to follow always a uniform style now uh, do not plagiarize you, even if you are like you know picking up verbatim passages always footnote them although i would strongly discourage from picking up verbatim passages whatever you do please write in your own words then again use credible sources so do not cite things like wikipedia or you know maybe a, a, a website which has you know you don't haven't heard of so you should always stick to credible sources so for example if you are citing a primary source sites for like you know for a legislation maybe a government site or maybe if you are citing a report then the original place where you got the report from so that's always a better citation than maybe a secondary source again proofread your article twice and thrice check for grammatical mistakes check for spelling mistakes because these are the tiny things you know which are looked at example if you are sending uh, your article to oxford they are obviously going to reject it if they see that you know this person has made a lot of grammatical mistakes or spelling errors etc now uh, 
you should always question your write up as a critic to assess your logic what i mean here is once you are done with everything read your article and read it as someone who is reading it to you know point out mistakes there and then see where you've gone wrong you know because a lot of times what happens is when we are we we read our own work uh, we tend to think that okay this is a, this is the best we could do but when we are reading something with a view to criticize that thing that's when we would see the error apparent which we may not have seen if we read it as our own work so read it with an aim to question your article and point out to the mistakes which you think are there when you are doing it uh, think of it maybe you know as that like you have to prepare a critique of this article what points could you actually raise here so that's when you will realize like you know that what are the points you can actually focus on and where have you gone wrong so uh, yeah you should always do this before you finalize your article this is where you would get to know what mistakes you have made yeah so you should keep all uh, these things in mind before you do your legal research and writing uh thank you and i'm open to questions now uh rajesh i think you are on mute oh uh, i'm sorry ma'am uh, yeah. so before we open to questions thank you uh, so much for ma'am to uh, for this session insightful session guys uh, if you follow uh, ma'am on linkedin or youtube you might have noticed that ma'am is still in contract drafting and also in employment law so please follow if you are very new to the contract drafting and how to draft contract uh, this is the best platform i think uh, to learn something or to uh, add something to your value yeah open to questions hello ma'am good evening hello am i audible yeah yeah uh, ma'am my problem that i faced uh, when i make my project is that even though i put a proper uh, citation like a footnote and even though i don't take the source as it is verbatim still i find plagiarized uh, sometimes in my projects when i see it in turnitin how to avoid that so a lot of times what happens is that you know if you are using generic sentences then uh, they are going to show up as plagiarized so there's a particular percentage basically uh, which you need to avoid so typically if it shows maybe around 10 to 20% plagiarized just go through the report and check what are the passages they are talking about as plagiarized so you they will show you the source where you know they think you have picked it up from and if you see is the generic phrase which they are saying is plagiarized then it's fine otherwise you should you know rephrase and write it again ma'am uh, there is another question is it possible to include all our data in the writing uh no not really like you know when you when you will read you would read a lot of stuff so basically you should as your aim of your research should be to start from the broadest possible horizon and then narrow it down to the pertinent research question as we, and when you advance in the process of research so do not include all the data into the writing you should always you know separate what is relevant from the irrelevant and include only the relevant bits in any more questions please ask your question how to check uh, just this how to check the plagiarism and narrow its percentage Uh, yeah so yes, yeah so uh, you should actually you know first uh, put your uh, text into the anti plagiarism software they are going to give you back a report now in that report they are going to tell you what are the sources where they think you have picked up your words or your sentences from go through those and see what is the level of plagiarism which is there you know they show a percentage of plagiarism then you rephrase your particular uh, sentence into your own words and uh, i would suggest uh, you know use unique words uh, which you will not find anywhere else for example instead of give right provide so you know uh, not too fancy words but you know something which you would think would not be used by other people a lot so because a lot of times so what happens is that even generic phrases are caught on 
and then they would say that this is plagiarized which is not exactly the case because obviously a lot of people are going for example this particular phrase which says uh, you know xyz legislation states this and this now this is something which everybody would use so pointing this out as plagiarism is not like you know something which you should be too much concerned with so if you if that's really increasing plagiarism percentage then rephrase the same in your own words Ma'am, uh, next question is: Could you suggest some good blogs where one could submit his write-up, his or her write-up? Yeah. So uh, first of all, obviously, the Indian Corporate Law blog run by Professor uh, Uma Khan. That that's a really good blog. Apart from that, uh, recently I saw the Securities blog. I think which is run by a student only. That's also something which is really good. uh yeah and i think apart from that uh, even nliu has uh, you know a blog which you can submit to uh, yeah also uh, i think bolters kluver has an arbitration blog where you can submit again so yeah so those are some of the blogs that you can actually choose to for um, any uh, more questions yeah if i am doing analysis of a judgment then uh, should can i pick up as it is from the judgment so that i can maintain the dignity of judgment or i should rephrase it so that i will not be getting caught up with the plagiarism so uh, you can pick some bits from the judgment whenever you do that put them in italics and you know within quote always you know because for example you should say uh you know the judge was saying in this paragraph of this particular judgment and then you put it in italics and in quotes so that way uh, the the reader would know that you are citing something from the judgment but uh, you know reduce that to a minimum because if someone wanted to actually read the judgment they would go and read the judgment why would they read your case comment so there should be some value added to that particular case comment yes next question I think so. There is no more question. Ma'am, uh, the question is: Sometimes our writing becomes monotonous when we add more facts. How can we make it interesting for the readers? Yeah. So uh, the thing is, you know, uh, when you, for example. take an analytical topic now uh, when you are talking about maybe the legal regime governing that particular issue so you should like you know not put all the facts or like you know everything in it but maybe you can say for example you know uh, the particular relevant section then talk about laws which have interpreted this particular relevant section then maybe you can go on to how this particular uh, issue has been you know diversely interpreted by the judiciary so these are the kinds of you know snippets which you should you know throw in your article or maybe some interesting trivia related to it so that way is when someone's reading the factual bit of your article they would actually be learning something out of it rather than you know just reading the facts so that way is you can make your article interesting ma'am uh, the another question is how to narrow down the topic even if the topic is of contemporary relevance that sometimes topic is very broad topic is very broad yes ma'am okay so uh, yeah so uh, for example um now there have been uh, labor law changes recently so uh, these changes have you know been uh, friendly towards the laborers from the central government side on the other hand uh, the state governments have uh, you know uh, put forth certain uh, ordinances where they are saying they are going to scrap all labor laws except for three so for instance you are writing about the recent labor law changes now recent labor law changes could be a very broad term now what can how can you address this uh, you can either pick up the central government's uh, changes or the state government's changes or you can actually split the two against the other and you can say that the central government is proposing something different from the state government then maybe go on to you know explain the two and then discuss what's better how will this be harmonized etc so that's how you know the the topic the labor law changes would be very broad but when you go deep into it you are going to get like you know different facets of the same 
pick up a particular facet and then write on the same. That means you will be able to narrow down the topic. Uh, any more question? Yes. Okay. Ma'am, uh, uh, could you please tell how to go about with the legal writing journey for an amateur trying to write for their first article for a blog? Okay. So uh, the first step is to choose the topic for the blog. Now, blogs typically address current uh, or latest legal. I would suggest uh, firstly narrow down which blog you want to write for and which subject you want to write for. For example, uh, if you are writing on IBC, now uh, yesterday only the ordinance came out which has suspended IBC for six months. So, you know, you can go through that particular legislation. You can go through the various opinion pieces on the same and then figure out what are the possible issues that you can address in this particular blog. Once you are done with this kind of research, where you have your, you know, primary question ready, then you should, uh, you know, sit down to write. When you write and you start with your blog, the blogs are very small, you know, it's a thousand to fifteen hundred word uh, article generally. So what you need to do is explain what problem are you addressing. For instance, if you're talking about that suspension of IBC may cause problems to the small startups who have not been paid. So how, what recourse do they have now? How, how are they going to get their money released? So talk about why has it been suspended? How is this going to cause a problem, you know, for the existing people? And what would your take be? When you are writing in your introduction, you could, you know, maybe add a little line saying, you know, I'm going to analyze this change. Then you move on to addressing what is the change and then to the implications of this particular change. And finally, the conclusion. So you should have a structure to your writer. Also, now uh, when you have research, for example, uh, you would be discussing what is the change. Go and research on this particular change. Read the ordinance, read whatever has been written about it, the opinion pieces which have been written. There would be a lot of other blogs on this. So go through all those things and then only, you know, include the relevant bits in your blog because the blog has to be only 1,000 to 1,500 words long. So you have to structure it properly and make it very focused, crisp, and specific. Yes. Uh, should I take more question, ma'am? Yeah, sure. Sure. Yes, any more question? If you have any doubt, you can ask in the chat box or unmute yourself for the question. I think there is no more question, ma'am. So, thank you very much, ma'am, for the session. Or, uh, thank you. Guys, please follow ma'am on the YouTube. This content is very. Uh, uh, yes, ma'am will uh, upload this session on YouTube. Sir, I have a question. Yes, uh, yes please. Uh, sir, what is the ratio, uh, ma'am? Uh, what is the ratio of uh, facts and our personal opinion that should be there in our uh, 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 writing sample? Uh, yeah, so you talk firstly about the problem you are addressing, then you talk about uh, the legal regime which is governing that particular problem, and that's where the facts come in. So I think you should reduce that, you know, maybe to a minimum and not talk a lot about it. Just explain the relevant uh, parts of the law, which are pertinent to the problem you are addressing. And then move on to your analysis and implication. Because the facts are there for everybody to see. But it's your, okay. you know, analysis, which is the most important part in a writer. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, Raga, for this wonderful words. Thank you so much, ma'am, uh, for this session. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Bye. Take care. Bye.
recordings done yeah 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 okay uh